scriptures that have been chosen for the day. First is found in Exodus 16. Listen now to the holy word of God. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us into this desert to starve the entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my directions. From Exodus 17, the whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people, take with some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. And I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is it the Lord, is the Lord among us or not? Let's pray together. Lord God, a message for Tiffany and Jimmy. A message, O Lord, on the day that they join a church family. A message that they can treasure in their hearts. A message that they can store away for times when they are hungry and thirsty. A time when they really need you. God, a message for these two that possibly the rest of us will find meaning in as well. Speak to us, Lord, for your servants are listening. We thank you for your word, which is perfect, which is powerful, that cuts really deep into our hearts and soul. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. And God's people said. In both of these passages, the people are grumbling. They're hungry. They're thirsty. In both of these passages, Jimmy, what I notice right away is that God sees his people. Tiffany, right away what I notice is that God's watching. God is not far away. 
He's not remote. He's not sleeping somewhere. Immediately what I notice is that when Moses comes to him and goes, God, the people are going crazy down here, that God's watching. The God is not asleep. And whenever you're tempted in life to go, where is God? That you would remember this morning and you would remember these passages and hear these words well, that God knows everything that's going on in your life. That God sees you. Because see, it's happened to people in here that they have gone, I don't know where God is right now. Say amen. And there's times that you need to remember passages like this, that God knows what's going on. When Moses comes to God and says, hey, we're really hungry down here, God doesn't say, oh, oh, Jimmy, I didn't know that. No, God knows immediately, and not only that, but he also has a plan. In both times, he has a plan. When they're hungry, he sends manna. Manna in Hebrew means, what is this? I mean, they'd had loaves of bread, but you never had to go in your backyard after the dew evaporated and start picking up bread. That's the way God delivered it, and it was sweet. And they said, what is this? God had a plan because he's watching your life. God has a plan, not because he's remote, but that he's close and personal. He has a plan for both of you. He's watching. He's not oblivious to your life. He knows all about you. Scripture says, I know when you, go ahead and say it, rise up and when you, when you go, and when you, see they know this. They know this because they've experienced it. God sees and God has a plan. Sometimes we don't realize how close God is. Amen? Sometimes we're we're just clueless of how close God is. There's another guy in the Old Testament. You know the story of Jacob? Jacob's ladder? We know that story? Whoa, I've lost some already. This morning, this will be yes, this will be no. Jacob and the ladder? Oh, okay, they're all back now. Sometimes you just lose them, Jimmy. I I don't know how it happens. And Jacob has this incredible experience with God. And I love the line that he says, whoa, surely God was in this place and I did not know it. And you'll have that experience in your life. You'll go, whoa, God was with us the whole time and and we didn't know it. To me, it's one of the most powerful verses in the whole story. We get fascinated with the ladder. We get fascinated with Jacob wrestling with God. We get fascinated with Jacob just period because he's kind of a shyster. Sometimes he's not a real nice person. Could we just get fascinated with God? That he's with us every step of the way? That you and I could get to a point in our life that every day we would get to the end of the day and go, God was in this place and I didn't even know it. He was with me in the car. He was with me at work. He was with me all day long and I didn't even know it because God sees us. 24-7, and he has a plan for our lives. 
<laughs> you, know, you and I don't catch God by surprise. Amen? He sees us. Surely he was with me at work today and I didn't even know it. God sees us. The second thing I notice in both of these passages is that God loves his people so much that he provides. Amen? He loves us so much and he provides. You see God's heart in these stories and sometimes we go, well, of course he gave them bread. Well, he didn't have to. Of course he gives them water. He doesn't have to. Jesus doesn't need to be the living water and he doesn't need to be the bread of life, but he loves you and that's who he is so that he can care for you. You got a little bit wet today. I was really tempted. There were people out here that know me. And they thought, wow, he's being really easy on Jimmy today. You know what's cooler than that? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit in you is to be like a spring of water that is just boiling up inside of you. This living water. It's to be like a spring inside of you. And that's the fellowship that you enjoy. And when it doesn't happen in the fellowship, then something's wrong. That the joy is just to be like, just springing up inside of us. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen? That little bit of water compared to what the Holy Spirit, the spring of living water inside of you, that little bit of water is nothing. It is, and we can all say it together, that is like a drop in the bucket. How many of you have ever seen one of those documentaries like, um, like some part of Africa and they have a dry season and a wet season. Raise your hand if you've seen something like that. Raise your hand if you only watch sports and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Go ahead and raise your hand for your husband who doesn't dare to hold up their hand right now. If you've ever watched one of those, those are so cool. They'll have this dry season, right? And, and the animals are like, and there's this little usually a lake and it's just dried up into this little little watering hole no bigger than me to you right and animals are dying plants everything is brown everything is dead and then the rainy season comes have you seen something like that jimmy and then they fast forward it raise your hand again if you've seen something like that they fast forward it and all of a sudden the rain's coming. And then all of a sudden the clouds are there. And then all of a sudden everything starts to green up. And then all of a sudden the, the little pond is now this huge lake. And animals are coming. And everything is green. And everything is renewed. And everything is refreshed. <sighs> Springs of living water is what God promises his people. And Moses goes over and he strikes this rock. And water comes gushing out. In Isaiah, in the 43rd chapter, it says, There will be barren lands, and in the middle of the desert, they will see springs of living water. See, John 10.10 10 says to you, Tiffany, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have life to the full. See, in Jesus' mind, there's two different kinds of life. You've read it before, but now I invite you to think about it. Jesus says there's two kinds of life. I've come that you might have life and that you would have life to the 
I mean, incredible life. Incredible life. Why do we settle for the little bit when Jesus has so much for us? How many of you have ever read anything from C.S. Lewis? C.S. Lewis is like this Christian, I mean, he's like the Michael Jordan of theology, of just living a Christian life. His spiritual mentor said to him when he was young, C.S. Lewis, this incredible theologian, had a spiritual mentor, and he said, why do you keep snacking when God offers you a whole banquet? C.S. Lewis said he left the guy's office and was like, what is he talking about? Why do you keep snacking at Christianity when God has so much in his kingdom that he wants to offer you? Why are you satisfied with life? When Jesus wants to give you life to the full. You know what will get people really excited in this church? When they see Jimmy and Tiffany after a life to the full. Because God has so much to offer you. Bread, when it feels like a desert. Living water, when you're thirsty. I guess you'll have to decide every day. And I hope, Jimmy, that as you watch people around you, you will not see people who are satisfied with life. But they are after life to the full. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. John 10, 10 people. I have come that you might have life and life to the full. Abundant life. Crazy life. Passionate life. Where you Were you and that guy over there? I don't know his name. I'm just going to call him the good-looking bearded guy. Will you sneak in here next Saturday night and you put a big basin out there and people are walking in and they're putting their hands in water and they're looking at each other and they're saying, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Where you live with passion. Where you live with crazy, reckless abandon. I bring a college group down to Texas every January and we build a couple of houses. I don't know if you've noticed that prices have kind of gone up on a few things. This last year I was like, uh, (laughs) I didn't quite meet budget. And that's no fun. So a guy came to me a couple weeks ago after a church service and he goes, I think I have some trusses for you for Texas. Could save you some money. Woo, you know what a truss is? There you go. Jimmy, do you know what a truss? You can lead the whole team, okay? Here we go. And if you ask people to help, they won't dare to say no because you're brand new members. Amen? (laughs) See, now they've even amen. So he comes to me and he goes, I think I could have trusses for you. And I'm like, that's kind of a big expense when you're building a house. And he has a couple of buildings he wants tore down. And I'm like, am I crazy enough to do that for God? Am I crazy enough to call you and say, what day do you want to show up? Am I crazy enough? When you belong to a church, you still with me, Jimmy? Because I preached way too long already. And they'll also amen me on that if I just ask them. When you belong to a church, 
that is constantly asking, do we dare to do that? Would God have us do that? Let that be your North Star. That you are not satisfied with just average life because there are millions of Americans that just have average life. That you have life to the full. That you are running after Jesus with everything in your heart. To love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. I had another four pages from John 6, but I just tucked them away. We talked about water, and we talked about bread, and we talked about the church being a bunch of beggars who have found bread right here. And then they go out and they tell other beggars, we know where you can find bread. In John 6, Jesus calls himself the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And he made sure that the people knew that he came down from heaven. He was a gift from heaven because God sees, God loves, and God provides. And you know what he provided you with and you with? A Savior. And his name is Jesus. And it's why we're here this morning to worship him. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you and we praise you. I have no idea what's next, but I will move out of the way. Let the praise team come. But we know one thing, God, we are so thankful that you see us and that you love us and that you provide for us in your holy name.